As a director, Cordova occupies a unique place in the film world. Night Film yeah. is a psychological thriller, and it's about a washed up journalist named Scott McGrath, whose life has taken a turn for the worse. Um, he hasn't worked in years. And he starts to look into the apparent suicide of a young woman named Ashley Cordova, whose father just happens to be this reclusive cult filmmaker named Stanislas Cordova. And Cordova's a very divisive figure. He's an underground cult horror director, and his 15 films are considered the most horrifying films ever made. So Scott not only takes it upon himself to investigate the death of this young woman, but also to find out who exactly this figure is. And um, over the course of the book, he becomes further and further immersed in this somewhat terrifying and dark world. The investigative journalist, Scott McGrath, he wanted to see once and for all what actually went on behind that curtain. What did you find out? The idea for the novel came very much out of um, a question of popular culture and why there can't be more mythical cre <laughs> mythical figures in terms of, um, well, we have this like very obvious overt celebrity culture, but why can't there be more mystery? And I think in this day and age where there's Facebook and Twitter, where you know, we're living in a, in a world where there seems to be less and less mystery around us. So this book was very much a reaction to that, to create a figure that is well known and quite popular, but is entirely underground. And even though he is popular, people really don't know very much about him. I hadn't actually written a word of night film when I was like coming up with the plots of Cordova's 15 horror films. And all of my friends were like, well, maybe you should actually start writing the actual book and not worrying about like what his like background material is. But I felt like that was so much a core of what the novel comes out of that I really needed to know what that background was. It's a pet peeve of me as a reader when I'm reading a novel and I just don't feel that the author knows like really key things about their characters or the morality of their world or so I really just wanted to not fake it and just to know it myself and to take the trouble to make it real to myself. But that part of writing is actually like my it's probably what I live for, the idea of creating and, and um, creating something out of nothing. That's the most gratifying aspect. So if I can spend <laughs> two weeks <laughs> coming up with these biographies and these characters from scratch, like that's kind of, that is my bliss. A lot of what um, Cordova came out of was initial research on Stanley Kubrick. And I remember when I was on tour for Special Topics, I ended up for, I can't remember how I came to start learning a lot about Stanley Kubrick because I've always been a fan of his film. And then just learning about who he was as a person. And he was a very much a family man, but he was also had this other persona, which was his myth, which was that he was a recluse and strange and wouldn't ride in a car and wouldn't leave his estate. And then I also found it really fascinating how actors that had worked with him sort of give their lives over to this man. And um, they just go and live with him in, the, in his estate with very little contact with the outside world and live in this sort of cocoon, this like biosphere basically, this fictitious world that I'm sure as a person you start to blend like fact with fiction and, and, and at some point it all just becomes one thing. So all of that definitely came into my world because I just found it is a sort of like a modern day sorcerer. I was very much aware that the idea of a web page in a novel is just something that has not been done before. But I think like when I was working with my graphic designer, we wanted to make those like archival and almost like works of art into themselves. So it's like transforming a bit the idea of like a web page being something like fascinating to sort of like spend an extra some extra time on. I like as a reader to feel as if I'm deciphering the information myself as well. It is taking a slightly more active role. Um, and there are clues in the novel, like tiny details that Scott actually misses that the really like observant reader might put together. I would love like in the middle of the night to go to like an underground screening and follow like some cryptic directions that I took off an underground website. So all of this really stems out of things that I would like to do. <laughs> As strange as that sounds when you read the book. Um, but yeah, just a sense of like, why can't there be more? Why can't there be more shadows in this world? Culturally, you can't really um, isolate what leads to violence. However, I mean, I think 
once we start censoring art, I think that that's sort of the end of art as well. A world with more shadows is okay, because within those shadows you can project your own imagination. A world with Cordova is a richer world, even if it might feel more terrifying and dangerous. So of course, I mean, I would love, I wish, I wish he did exist.